From Las Vegas, it's Let's Talk News Now with Rick and Ella. Welcome back to Let's Talk News Now. We were just speaking, ladies, just a moment ago. We just before we went to the break, which, by the way, thank you to all those folks. <laughs> we were talking about the impact of the economy, not just on the presidential race, but the fatigue level. Fatigue level. You said even the way, Angela, I thought it was brilliant. The way you were talking about the fact the way people even treat each other because they're so frustrated. This has been going on for four and a half years. They're done. They're over it. You know, they they're just don't want to be nice anymore. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, the other thing I think about, though, is I'm thinking to myself, when is, when are we going to start to experience some things in the middle class and in the lower classes as far as the economic turn? Because, and I have nothing against Wall Street, and I have nothing against people making a profit. Right. My, my hero is Warren Buffett. I want to be in that top one percentile. I want to have so much money, I'll pay for everybody else's health care, <laughs> and it won't matter. Okay? I'll still have plenty of money. Yep. Okay, I like that. All right? I want to be in that position. But the the thing I find really interesting, and like I said, is the way that people are going about this right now, and, they, and they're, they're so frustrated, they're angry, they don't know what's going to happen. We have hecklers. And, and <laughs> we, we always have hecklers. Um, but the question becomes, at what point will it start to turn around? Is it going to start to turn around? Or has this now become our new norm? Oh, God, mm-hmm. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm being absolutely serious. Mm-hmm. I was asking the question, when's the money start really, if trickle-down economics can work, which I'm not so sure it does. When people stop getting s- scared. Because uh, do you notice how um, when you think that there's no enough, you hoard. You mm-hmm. stop spending as much, mm-hmm. you stop spending at all, and right. then you just kind of... And then obviously if everybody's hoarding their money, <laughs> there's no money circulating. Right. So I think when people stop being so scared to spend, then we could begin to... Okay, so you're talking about consumer confidence. When consumer confidence mm-hmm. goes up, it goes, it's fine. Right. But people are still having to look at their own personal checkbooks. The, the entities that are making large profits, okay, in some cases record profits, but we're not seeing that trickling down yet right why they're not spending it they're wait, not wait, sharing wait, it that's wait, the wait, thing wait. even at that top level because obviously for it to I trickle get down that. it's got to be let go from what they've been through too i mean it it's all relative i i personally believe that everybody needs to help people out on their right. own level you know and if you have a lot of money that allows you to help out more people but everybody doesn't believe that and so they still think they're recovering from what they've been through the last few years too, so they're hoarding just like we are. But it doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the reason it doesn't make any sense, I'm not sure that the average consumer understands is, but for every dollar that's put into circulation, it actually generates, I believe the number is close to $49. Right. right. Because when you generate a dollar, mm-hmm. and then it turns around and it goes from hand to hand to hand, coupled with tax collected, mm-hmm it would do two things. The two biggest complaints that people have, the deficit, because it's right. reduced when you've got more taxpayers. Right. And the second part of it is, more dollars in circulation means it actually bolsters the economy. Right, and the scary thing is that they're, that both parties are gonna play this until after the election with the tax Maggeton. And there's so many of those tax relief things that George W. put into place that are expiring, that expire at the end of this year, and, and they're going to play it off. And so you have people that have money that are holding back because they don't know what their tax bill is going to be this year. All right. That's interesting. That is really interesting because I've heard more than one person say that. If you don't know what the playing field right. is, then how in the world are you supposed to plan? Exactly. And if you can't figure it out at the top level, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then how the blazes are we going to figure it out in the exactly. bottom level? Yeah. And, and one of the taxes that's up to go away is the marriage penalty. And so that affects everybody that's married at least <laughs> at right. that point you know and but there's bigger ones too and it's it's that's why they're calling it tax yeah. <laughs> you know and if you're even if you're making a lot of money if you don't know if you're going to owe two hundred thousand two million whatever mm-hmm. at the end of the year in taxes on all your businesses you're going to hold back a little bit and not give people raises yet because you don't know if you can afford to in in your own eyes it I'm all comes sure back down an email about that but to fear it's all relative isn't it, it- <laughs> Yeah, right. it all comes back down to fear. And, and since when have um, decisions made in fear ever made very much sense? Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate to your point. Mm-hmm. You said that it, they don't know what their tax burden is going to be. They don't understand this. Right. They don't understand that. Okay, fine. Let's just play this out. for Go the next step. 
<laughs> okay. During these last few years, why they have been making profits again mm -hmm. and large profits, if they had already started to fill the economy with new jobs, mm -hmm. there would be new revenues for the government. I, I they would have already been in place for the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, the deficit would already be reduced. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And but the, their, their uh, profits should actually be going up even higher because of it. I agree, but it, it's all relative again. And, and while it might seem like you know some of these businessmen that have all this money don't have those same worries and concerns that you and I do, it still comes down to you're getting this paycheck, but you don't know if you're going to get this one and whether or not you can pay your bills. And it's all relative for what level you're at. My okay. final thought on that is going to be this before we go to break, and that is I think that if people were working, the middle class was doing better, I don't think they'd be arguing so much about the rich getting continue to get tax breaks. That's what I think. Okay? Probably right. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with some entertaining.